Um, hey, everybody. I'm Ingi, and I'm going to give a talk about tab completion uh, for every program and every shell. I call it complete shell. So um, what is tab completion? For those who don't know, it's basically context-sensitive help um, when you're typing in text. Um, you just press the tab key, and it's supposed to do what you want. So uh, Gmail has tab completion now. Let's take a look. Um, so let's say we're writing a message to uh, Larry Wall in email, and I say, um, hi. Ooh, so it gave me a suggestion. Yep, and so I just hit tab, accept that one. And I say, like, how, yeah, that sounds good. Go with that, tab. Um, sounds good. Why is Google sending email to Larry Wall? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and then, oh, I forgot a subject here. Let's, uh, oh, yeah, that's a good one. Cool. I think I'll hit send. What do you think? Okay, so. <laughs> Maybe we'll have spam for lunch. Hmm. Let's see. So a lot of people use um, tab completion for minimal stuff, like um, a file completion at the terminal. So if we were to say like ls slash t, I hit tab, it's temp, and then I hit tab a couple times, and I get all these things. And let's see what's in snap. Oops. So you notice when I hit tab, it, it said more. So I have a pager here. It's because the font is so big. Um, so tab completion kind of sucks on Bash um, if it goes off the screen. But let's go ahead and now that it's, oh, there's nothing in there. Um, but you get the idea. Um, but good tab completion actually gives the best info at any point in a command. So it doesn't always have to be. Um, a file name or path. Um, let's take a look at one that I just became aware of um, a month or so ago, um, Perl itself. So if you type in Perl minus M and hit tab, okay, it's going to list all the modules installed on my system. So let's see. Um, say yes. Okay, and now I have this pager. It says more at the bottom, but it's not actually more. It's built, it's the read line pager built into. Um, bash and it absolutely sucks. It only goes forward or you can quit it. That's all you can do. You can spacebar forward or Q to quit. So if you type in something like um, I don't know, CGI. Okay, so then it's less and you can say, oh, I just wanted CGI pretty and it tab completes. Cool. All right. This is going to come up over and over again um, throughout the talk, the, the Perl one. So could everybody see the bottom of the screen there? Um, okay. Oh. <laughs> That's true. Um, I'll try to remember to clear the screen more often. Um, okay. So uh, it's 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 my opinion that all good command line programs should have tab completion and they should have man pages. Um, we get a lot of new stuff these days that doesn't have man pages in other languages. All the Perl stuff does, um, and that's good. But none of the Perl stuff really has tab completion. Perl itself does because it's provided in Bash completion and in um, other shells completions. But other than that, Perl doc and those kind of things generally been left out. Um, so how do you make tab completions for your commands? So the thing is that almost nobody writes completions for their CLIs. And who's published um, a CPAN module that installs a module, or sorry, a bin direct um, thing? And did you do tab completion for those bins? It ships one. Somebody contributed it. Right. So somebody contributed it, and it ships one for what shell? Bash. For Bash. Right. So the deal is you really need a community, because nobody who's going to actually write a bin command is going to take the time to learn these other subsystems for shells they don't even use. Um, but if you have a 
popular commands. Somebody will contribute it eventually. Um, it's pretty hard to do this stuff. The bash stuff is really nasty. Um, Z shell or Z shell. I, use the Canadian pronunciation because I learned about it when I was living up in Active State Vancouver. Um, <clears throat> Z shell and fish were kind of built around better tab completion. Actually, Z shell really um, was, and it does have some nice features for tab completion. I'll show you those in a second. Um, fish actually just wanted to rewrite the whole shell language, including tab completion. Um, but some people love that. And KSH just barely works at all. Um, <laughs> in fact, well, let's, um, let's actually try the Perl command in all those shells real quick. So, um, if I say curl minus m, okay, give me four. I don't, oh, okay, there's some more, okay. And I can go through these, I guess I could, let's see. Okay, so as I went back, it wasn't really responsive in that if I type in algo. Okay, so it goes through those things. It's not bad. Um, let's look at a, uh, Z shell, so we do curl minus M. Okay, so now this is giving us a long list and let's see if we can hit tab for more. Okay, I'm going through the whole thing. This is not any good. Um, maybe if I type in CGI. Okay. Um, and then can I tab? Okay, that's not too bad. Um, and let's do a uh, good old but well, we already did bash. Um, let's try k, k shell. So you have to say set minus o emacs. It really, I just learned this this morning. <laughs> and then you don't hit tab, you hit double escape. Um, and it only works for things like ls slash temp. Wait, am I, I'm not, am I in? Yes. Okay, it does work for tab, I'm sorry. So. The tab actually works, and it gives you all these numbered things. I don't know if I can type in 23. I can't type in anything. Well, maybe I can. Tmux. Okay. So it has some kind of tab completion. That's good to know. Um, I haven't actually delved into the, um, the case hits beyond this, but I will. Um, so let me introduce uh, Complete Shell to you. So anybody who's on IRC, I encourage you to... Um, on the freenode.net um, server to join the pound complete shell. This will come in useful um, if you have a, and if you have a laptop, this is gonna be an interactive thing. We're gonna get you all going with complete shell, if I can. Um, okay, I'm just gonna check the IRC channel, see if, all right, nobody's joined, cool. You guys all suck. Um, just a fact, right? Um, <laughs> Okay, so complete shell is a, it's a really simple data DSL. So you just define all the data parts that can be gleaned to make a completion in any language. It compiles that DSL into native bash, CHS, and fish completions. Um, and it has a CLI to manage the billions of completions that people have written, which is, this is all lies. Um, but this is how it's supposed to be. This is talking in the future. This will be true in 10 years, right? Um, it's really easy to write and publish your own completions. Um, and it makes bash completion, as we'll see, actually, I'd like to say on par better than uh, Zish. This, the Zish man just walked in. It's Andrew Grangard, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think it's better for the CPAN command, you'll see, than, than what you just saw in um, either Zish or, or, or Fish. I was saying Z shell, so it said Z shell, Z shell, and Z sh. Take your. Okay. Um, yeah. So basically, I want to make the best completion out there. I want to make completion better in general. I want to make it really. I want to make it for every command that doesn't have completion, and every command that has shitty completion, and make it um, possible on every shell. And so it just seemed like a problem that wasn't solved. And it seemed like a solvable problem, so I decided to solve it. Um, I'm going to show you, when you get this installed, here's what you'll get. You'll get a, uh, a command. So if you run the command, you just get the help. Um, or if you run it with help, you get the help. Same thing. 
If you run it with the help command, you'll get the man page, which is the full documentation for it. And of course, you get the same with man, because every good command has a man page and completion, as we'll see. Um, if you search for the term CP, you'll get CPAN, CPANM, CPAN, CPM, and CPAN upload, most of which were written last night. Um, and if you look for Perl, these are all the Perl stuff I have right now, the billions, right? But we're going to get there. Um, yeah, I wrote Diesel and actually the Perl one this morning at 5 a.m. Okay. Um, this is the list of the ones that are installed. So since I have Complete Shell installed, it installs the Complete Shell um, completion. And here I'll install the CPAN M1. Okay. And there's a bug that when I do this from the terminal, it picks up the wrong information. But, um, and if I want to install all the Perl ones, I can do that. So I'm going to kill that. Um, <clears throat> it's configurable. And here's what the config looks like out of the box. Everything's turned off, but um, you can turn on a single setting like this. So in Bash, you know how you have to hit tab, tab? to get completion, well, you can use single tab, and I, I, I make that just a config option so that you only have to hit tab once. Um, and so if we do that, then we look at the config, and now single tab is true, um, and the others are unset, and so they default to false. But here's the cool one, modern settings. If I set modern settings to true, then it turns on all these goodnesses that you really want, that I think you really want. So, and you can turn those off again if you want. We'll see how those work in just a minute. But first, I want to introduce uh, a company called ZipRecruiter that I happen to work for. I started there last summer. And I just want to mention it because, um, and I hope that you can agree, Andrew, even Andrew um, left recently, but that it's a pretty special place. And how many um, ZipRecruiter people are in the audience? So we got, take a look at, at these guys. So he's got Ben. Uh, can't even see that far. Is it Sterling? And uh, Sterling. And so um, it's located in Santa Monica. And no matter what you think about LA, when you take a trip down there, it's pretty awesome for a week. I mean, I like to get out of there, but I really love being there for a week. It's a pretty great place. And I'm remote. I live in Seattle. And so a lot of the uh, Perl programmers are remote. Um, the original code base was written in Perl. And so we hire a lot of Perl people, but we're also I'm moving in a lot of language directions. I'd say there's probably eight to 10 languages in use and um, Python and Go are. So if, if you're kind of a Perl programmer thinks maybe you're hitting the end of your life with Perl and you want to go to a great company and uh, code Perl and maybe learn a new language and um, maybe Zip's for you. So talk to me or us if you're interested. Um, and I just, I wrote that note. I'm not, actually Zip is paying for this conference because they're such a cool company. Uh, for me, this is the first Yapsi that I've ever been paid to go to. Um, but they didn't ask me to say that, and I don't have to do anything for them. It's just I'm just here to do whatever I want, and that's what I'm doing, and I just wanted to say that. Um, so when I started at ZipRecruiter, I noticed that there was hundreds of um, bin commands that people had written, just small to large to medium um, things. And I also noticed that none of them had tab completion or man pages. So um, one day, MJD is one of my teammates. It just so happens. and. He kind of put a thing out. He had written a new bin thing and he's, that everybody was using. And he's like, could somebody do bash completion for this? And I'm like, I'll do it. And I'm like, but I'm not going to just do it for that. I'm going to do it for everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to open source it so we can do it for the entire world. And it's going to be awesome. And that's why I'm here. Um, and I also self the man page thing. I made wiki pages turn into man pages. And it was, that's pretty cool. We have an internal wiki. so. Even if you don't know how to make a man page, you know how to make a wiki page, it just becomes a man page. Um, OK, so this is where I want to get interactive. I want you guys to go to, let's see if anybody's joined the IRC channel. Ooh, yeah. Pudge, what up? Whatever. Um, anyway. Go to github.com slash complete shell slash complete shell. So complete shell is the org because I have a bunch of repos. Every completion is a repo. And then the complete shell repo itself is the main software. Um, 
and then, so I'm going to click on that now. And then I'm going to go to the wiki. And then I'm going to go to this little TCP IP thing I wrote at 6 in the morning. OK. And so if you want to play along, these are all the steps that you need to do. Um, and you need to do this in Bash because um, the other cells just aren't quite working. I've actually looked at the shells, and I know they'll work, but the work just isn't quite done yet. So um, if you could start up a Bash shell and run those things, please feel free. Also, I forgot to mention, um, you can drop problems in the IRC channel. Um, you could bring them up to me, but I probably won't have time to get into them. Or you can file bugs um, as issues on, on that in this repo. And I'd appreciate it if you did that. Um, anyway, let's actually, I'm going to actually run all these commands here at the, at the terminal. So I'm going to grab that first one. I'm going to go back and uh, how was I planning to do this? What's that? Awesome. <laughs> File a book. OK. Well, let's see. So I'm going to say, um, and actually, okay, I'm going to delete it. So we're starting from scratch. Um, OK. And then to actually enable this thing, um, just to just enable it in the shell, all I have to do is source uh, the dot complete shell dot RC file. And then I would just put that line into my bash RC if I wanted to have that all the time. And so now I have the complete shell command with completion. Um, sorry. OK. And those are all the, the sub commands that we saw. Um, and so we'll run like config. And so that tab completes, obviously. And we get that. Um, now. I'm gonna, I don't type so good, so I'm going to make an alias. Alias CS equals, does that, see that doesn't even tab complete, it's terrible. <laughs> and then I can say, um, that tab completes because it's my um, CS. And so now I have a CS command and I can say CS config. And it tab completes and everything. Um, the next thing I want to do is to turn on the modern settings. So if I say CS, if I hit tab, I get this. Um, and I had to hit tab twice. Watch what happens if I do, if I hit config, modern settings, true. Now I hit CS, I hit tab once, and I get all the commands with all their descriptions, which is much nicer. And if I type in IN, oh, I get installer init. I want to install cpanout. Yeah, it's just the order. Actually, I made the index in the order I wanted them to show. So um, might change, but it's so small right now. I kind of wanted to keep the cpan things together and yeah, that kind of thing. Um, OK, so now I have. Uh, CPAN M, and if I hit tab, what happens? OK, so th this is the other thing that you need to do is to um, <clears throat> install FZF. Who's used the fuzzy finder here? So a lot of people have used it. Um, I'm only using it, not in the sense that you've used it, but it's actually a pager selector that works really nice. And I'm replacing all of Bash's completion for large sets with fuzzy finder, um, and it works out really great. Um, so I'm going to move slash temp. I actually moved it out of the way so I would get this message, because um, you'll probably get it. And I'm going to move it to dot. And let's see what happens now. CPAN M. OK. So now I haven't typed in. Let's look for all the YAML modules. OK. Um, double colon, nah. Yeah. Double colon L, 
Mm. Okay, could do that one. Um, so I tab completed that. Um, let's do, the, we'll type in JSON first and then hit, here, let me clear it. Um, JSON first and then I hit tab. So it automatically goes and does all the JSON modules. I could keep typing in here. Um, and watch, I'm going to hit spacebar a bunch of times. Let's get those 20 modules. Hit enter. Okay, looking good. Um, let's do, let's see, more, some CGI stuff. Okay, and then I want to, I'll get these. Oh, I didn't really want these, so I'll hit space again. Clears those. I don't want that one. Maybe I'll go down here. Um, actually, I want to hit, what was it? Um, Okay, so if I hit delete, I clear everything. Not to be confused with backspace because that's actually my search string. So if I go back to this, that's the entire list. Um, but CGI is what we had and let's just take, okay. Oh, don't really want to do that. <laughs> so anyway, you can see that's, pr thank you, halfway. That's pretty awesome, right? Um, I think it's way better than the Z or the fish experience. Um, so, and actually, thank you to Olaf Alders for, I mean, he suggested this to me about two and a half or three months ago, and I just got it totally working last night. <laughs> but um, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. And actually, I can use, apply this to, I did it in a generic way so that um, applying the, uh, that pager, if you just turn it on, any, any large set will, you can do it that way. Okay, let's go back to the time. Oops. I don't know what happened. Let's try that. Okay. Um, let's go back to the wiki and see what, is there anything else we want to do? Nope, that was it. Okay. So, how does bash completion work? Well, basically, you assign a function to a command, and that function does the completion. And it's usually underscore function name. I mean, that's kind of a, just a... a a way that it's normally done. Um, but whatever that function is, it sets a comp reply array and maybe some what's called comp opt options. Then it passes it off to read line. And there's a number of read line things like the single tab and all that kind of thing are, the, are actually read line things that are built into Bash. They don't exist on all versions of Bash and you can't do any customization of that read line stuff. So that's why I really wanted to throw out the read line part and do the FCF stuff um, when it was appropriate then I can get more like uh, Z surface. Um, <clears throat> so, and if you were to type in complete, it will list all of the completions. Let's see how many we have installed. Okay, so 211 completions. Now, these completions are auto-loaded and not everybody knows this. So some people are making completion stuff and saying, oh yeah, just source this thing in your bash RC and you'll have completion for one command. It's silly. Um, and actually, it uses up space in the shell. So if I say something like this, type underscore Perl, it's not found. If I say Perl and hit tab completion and I run that again, oh, now I have a function. So that function was auto-loaded the first time I run it and it's only in that shell. It stays in there for the rest of the shell, but that's not a big deal. You know, because there, there's thousands of these completions actually in the auto load library, and you don't want all of those. Actually, it's really interesting. Some of these, um, let's look for one that's, let's pipe to grep um, long opt. So long opt is a generic one. Let's do sha sum. And first, let's say um, sha sum minus minus help. Okay, you see there's some um, flags up there. Now let's do sha sum minus minus. It's just actually grepping in real time <laughs> the help command and, and providing those things. Of course, they don't have descriptions because this is a generic thing and actually Bash has never had descriptions until Ingi came around. So, um, Yeah, and so, and it's all built over this framework that's actually existed since Bash 3.2, which is what Mac comes with. How many people know that Mac, the Bash on Mac 
sucks and will always suck. It's <laughs> by, by it, it's locked into a 2007 version because of licensing issues, and it's really starting to blow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, um, okay. So here's some of the things that I think Complete Shell does for Bash itself. Um, it starts with the original framework, um, so still can make use of that. Um, it adds descriptions, it adds hints. Like if I were to say, um, Perl, let's see, I think I have to do CS install Perl. And then I can say Perl minus E. Oops, that didn't work out so great. I think I have the old completion. Um, I just, do you know when it showed you the thing that said, hey, you need FCF? <laughs> that was a hint. But also, um, if I say, um, doing this in a new shell, um, Perl minus E. Okay, that's kind of broken, but yeah, it's giving a hint. So for, 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 there's certain things that you can't complete. It's like um, you have to enter a regex or you have to enter a string, and it'll just, but I give those hints saying enter a string here, or as, as specific of a hint as I can give. Uh, that's all I wanted to show. Um, see how many people we got. No, nope, there's two people. All right. um, the FCF thing you've seen, and I try to fix as much of the OSX sadness as I can. Um, it's still a, a work in progress. Um, who knows about, I'm gonna show you something. So this is a, a brand new shell. So usually you type in ENV and it shows you all of your variables in the shell. Well, that's not all the variables in the shell. Those are the, all the exported variables in the shell. So if I pipe that to say WC, there's 81 variables, no big deal. It's not polluted, I would say. But if I say set, okay, set's giving me, let's pipe. Okay, so I have 6,000 lines worth of crap in the shell that didn't need to be in there. If it was auto-loaded, it would be great. Let's actually look at what some of the crap is. A lot of it is git really, what is it, S is the bed. Um, in terms of this, it just dumps all of this junk into your shell um, that you don't need. And I think NPM is even worse. I'm trying to... Yeah, so you have all of these functions. <sighs> anyway, it's annoying. Um, hopefully, I will become the replacer of Git, and it'll all be smooth sailing. Um, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> okay, so basically, you write these foo.comps, and sometimes you need to call an actual function to get data, you can't, you know, it's just, this DSL doesn't do it all. Um, let's look at, hmm. it says it's installed. Oh, I know what it is. Um, Mistake in the slide. Okay. Okay. So here's the CPM. This is what the completion file looks like. It's um some it's a name, the command name, the version of this spec, um, what the command does, and then I have a bunch of options. And at the bottom, I have an argument that says um, call a CPAN module function, and you dot 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 means it can be several of these. So it, um, you can do many. And so if we go back to, where's that function defined? It's defined in a CPMM bash. So sometimes you need to define a function, and that's what CPM module does. Um, it calls complete shell pager, which calls FCF with these options. Because there might be other pagers, I, you know, you've got to be generic, right? Um, <clears throat> the compiler's written in bash, and I actually, Bash is almost the first programming language I reach for now. I've done probably more in Bash than, than it got to be one of the 
written a lot of bash. Um, <laughs> and it has this interactive test suite that's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna show you real quick. You have to run it in Tmux with a split screen or it will complain. But, um, and then I just say make test. So I was testing these things. How do you test completions? Because you gotta keep trying them, right? And you just go nuts and you're changing the code and I'm like, I can't keep trying these things. So I, um, what I have here is on the left you see some inputs with tab and, it, and on the right you see what's happening. And this is just the thing. And when it's all done and complete, I just press it again and it runs it again. So every time I make a coding change, I just run this test suite again and I look for changes. It's not as good as, it's not proved yet, but I can still see if it's stuff is way off or it helps me find bugs and I do this before I make a release. Um, oh yeah, gotta undo those changes, okay. So I was gonna show you really quickly how to make your own, and how are we doing on time, Mike? We're good, okay. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm gonna make something called foo.comp. Right, let's call it. Okay, and then I'll say, um, the first thing you need is a complete shell directive that just says what version of the DSL you're using, because I know this is gonna change over time. And I just wanted to, and I wanna give it a title to just show this is, that's what kind of file this is. Um, so people have an idea of what they're seeing if they just come across it. Um, and I'm just gonna say QWERTY, and I don't need to give anything else actually, and I'll just say command foo, command bar, and that's good enough. Now I can say C, uh, um, probably don't have, So I'm gonna add, so add means is for a file that's not in the registry, that's not from a repo, it's just something on your disk. And I'm gonna say qwerty.comp, and boom, now if I type in, <laughs> yeah, so now um, I have that. And if I turn on complete shell, well let's go in, See if we can re-add it, I hope we can. Okay, and then we type in a complete shell config modern settings true. Then I can type in QWERTY. Oh, I don't have a QWERTY command, so I can't tab complete that part. Um, yeah, so I get that. Cool, right? So not too hard to do. And then if you wanna publish it, you put it into a repo and then you add it to the index that's in the complete shell repo. It's under share, search index, and you give a pull request and that's how you would uh, do it if you weren't me. Um, <clears throat> right. So here's all of the ones that I've done and not done. Uh, I'm trying to think of which ones I haven't done. I haven't done um, a bunch of them. Let's try plaque up. So, no, actually, let's look at ones that we have done. So, mm, that's a good one. Oh, we can look at this one again. Okay, so I have um, the commands are one letter things. There's N, there's O, there's, there's a bunch of stuff, and it's all documented. Um, there's A for args, um, and there's C for subcommands. And if you put O or, if you put O or A after an N, then it applies to the command, but if you want the, argument, uh, the options to apply to the subcommand, then you put it after that subcommand is defined, and it just figures out and does all the right stuff. Um, there's a lot of weird commands out there, and so I'm still not done with all the, the edge cases, but it, it's, uh, it works pretty well for, for most stuff. Um, oops. Okay. So I was gonna hack a, uh, so here's what I did. I actually was trying to create 12 repos at once by writing bash commands that just applied a change to 12 directories. And I got pretty far. Um, so, 
Um, I, had, yeah, I had a dozen commands and I got about six of them done. It, that's when I had to go in and hand edit them and actually get them perfect. But here's one that's not complete. So what I did was um, I made a directory. I put a readme and a, and a command.comp file in it and made it a git directory and made a repo for it. So all that stuff's done. Um, I put in, so let's, uh, um, we'll say prove for Perl 6, that's the title, right, 76. It's a long time left. Um, and then I, t I just did a man prove 6 and dumped it into here, which seems like a good idea at the time. So let's take all of these and, uh, okay, now there are options. Um, you can take um, All right, we're getting there. Um, these commas aren't part of the DSL, so let's get rid of those. And for the rest of the stuff, let's just comment it out. All right, so now we're done with that. Um, now I'm gonna go over to CD source repos. Um, complete, was it proof six? Let's finish this puppy off. Um, okay, just double check it. Anybody see anything wrong? Do I get uh, trailing backspaces? What? Oh, yeah. I mean, that doesn't matter. It's just a comment. I don't care. So, I mean, we'll, okay, done, for you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and let's see, git commit minus minus. And let's just push that, uh, git push, right? So. Okay, guess it's out there. Oops, Oops everything's out there. And then let's CD, let's, just, uh, let's go change. Um, hmm. So now I wanna add this to the index. All right, let's see if this puppy works. Uh, let's see. Let's do, um, oh, I need, it. Oh, okay, I got it. Um, I need to upgrade it. Okay, cool. So I just needed to run um, CS upgrade and then I run, now I've proved six, let's install it. Um, prove six, there we go. Okay, and then I say prove six. Do I even have a prove six command? Oh yeah, I do. Um, 
Boom. World's a better place, right? Five minutes for what? Um, yeah, so what's next? Um, I don't know if anybody's interested in joining. We could have a buff tonight and knock out a bunch of Perl commands. I don't know, that's about it. Um, I'll take questions. Oh, okay. It, I just got it from a web page. You know, they were probably. I am a user of KShell. Okay. <laughs> would you would you appreciate this uh, framework working in KShell? Sure. Okay. Cool. Awesome. I got to figure out how to do yeah, cache. Do we call it cache? Grand guard side of it. Kish. Kish. Next, uh, another question. Was it Waltman or oh, who else had a question? Um, sir. This is a complete replacement. It's got its own completion commands. You're throwing those out and using them instead, right? No, no. I mean, you know, let's, you know, it's like, so we have this installed. Git still works. I mean, if, if I made a git completion file and you installed it, it would replace it. That's what I'm saying. You, you can't add on to the existing one. It's got to be a complete old one. Sure, sure. Could, is there a way you could inherit the existing? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, I, I do that a lot. So, I mean, I'm building, I'm building over the Bash framework. I mean, git wrote their own stuff. Let's be clear about that. Yeah. So, they're not something that I would actually maybe... I would have to think about it. Maybe yeah, I'd do some Git stuff. If you extend Git, you have your own commands. To right, which I have done. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like I have some Git commands that take a file, but Git's completion isn't aware of my command, and so I hit tab and no files are right. Right. I don't think that's really the essence of this because it's like you just want to add one command to something that already has a hundred commands, and it's. Well, then that's it. You just put, you just make it for your command. You don't find the other. I'd have to think about it. And it's an interesting point. It's an interesting point, yeah. You do it for subcommands only. Yeah, okay. Could you override this for subcommands? Well, wouldn't you? Wouldn't well, that's what they're saying, yeah. I, I haven't dash, thought of that. Right? Yeah. If you use the dash, like git dash, your command name, right, then you could write it for that. Sure. Right. But you'd have to write it for every shell. And so what he, I think what we want to do with this is generate it for one, you know, write it once. Generate it, yes. And generate it, yeah. Anything else? Anybody want to uh, clap their hands? <laughs> well, the... Uh.